I'm very happy to give the talk on the merge rate of primary black-hole bandwidth as a probability of Hubble parameter. I'm Chen Hongding from the Institute for Basic Science, Center for Theoretical Physics of the Universe, Cosmology, Gravity, and Astroparticle Physics Group. And this talk is based on this paper. So first, let's have a brief review on the merit of Hubble parameter. Currently, we have several methods to merit the Hubble parameter. One is from the early universe measurement from the cosmic microwave background. The Planck result report a Hubble parameter value of 67.4 km per second per microsecond. Meanwhile, in the later universe, we use the Tabernacle supernova as a standard candle to measure the Hubble parameter. The result is 73.04 km per second per microsecond. We can find these two values do not match with each other, and the difference has already reached a five sigma inconsistency. And this is a well known Hubble tension. In order to know where does the Hubble tension comes from, and uh, uh, we also develop some other methods. Uh, for example, at redshift one, two, we use the bionic acoustic oscillation scale in the large scale structures as the standard ruler to measure the Hubble parameter. Also, since the force detection of gravitational waves and the, the gravitational wave from the binary black hole as, as can be a standard siren to help us to measure the Hubble parameter. And the such a measurement can work uh, up to the redshift 10. How about an even higher redshift, uh, such as in the dark ages? Currently, we don't have the method. However, such a measurement is meaningful. Because if such a measurement result agree with the early universe measurement result, that's maybe me in the later universe measurements. There are some systematic uncertainty, or there are some new physics uh, curves in the later universe. Uh, or if such a result agree with the later universe measurements, that's maybe means there are some systematic uncertainty in the early universe, or there are some new physics happen in the early universe. However, which kind of uh, object can help us to measure the half parameter in such a high redshift uh, in these dark ages? The primary black holes can be a potential candidate. The reason is the primary black hole was formed at the early universe, and if their mass is larger than the 10 to 15 gram, they can exist at the current universe. Therefore, the primary black hole can be a potential object to help us to understand the evolution of the universe from the early time to the late time. But in order to measure the Hubble parameter from the primary black holes, we need to first detect some signals from the primary black hole. However, for such a high redshift, the signal is very difficult to, to, to detect. But you know, we have the gravitational waves, so we can try to study the gravitational waves from binary primary black holes. So which is the signals from the primary black hole binaries? They are gravitational waveforms. And from the gravitational waveforms, we can obtain some observables. For example, from the gravitational waveform phase, we can obtain the redshift mass of these primary black hole binaries. And from the amplitude of these gravitational waveforms, so we can obtain their luminosity distance to them, uh, from the binaries the Earth. But how to obtain the half parameter from this is observables. We can find here, we know the luminous distance. If we assume a background cosmology, for example, the lambda CDM model, and uh, then if we know the redshift of the PBH bandwidth, so we can solve the half parameter here. But because there are the primary black hole bandwidth and also the signals gravitational wave, we don't have their electromagnetic counterpart. In that case, we don't know the redshift signal. So a key point to use the PBH bandwidth to measure a half parameter is to construct a relation between the luminous distance and the cost redshift. So how to construct such a redshift relation? Maybe we can use the statistic properties of PBH bandwidths to help us to know them. Such a statistical property of PBH bandwidths may help to us to construct such a relation. So which kind of pro statistical properties? Uh, since the 
uh, the poor model perturbation uh, go outside the horizon and they're freezing. And when they re-enter the horizon, the over dense range will collapse to the uh, black holes. And when the PBH was formed, uh, the PBH has uh, some unique uh, promoter mass function. And uh, such a unique promoter mass function depends on their uh, formation mechanisms. For example, here we use the famous uh, Nogonum mass function in the inflationary, inflationary scenario. As an example, and such uh, statistical properties of PBH may help us to constrain the Hubble parameter. So here we want to use the this kind this PBH mass function and combine with the merge rate of PBH binary to probe the Hubble parameter. So just as what we have introduced from the gravitational waveform, we know their redshift mass, we know their luminous distance. But in order to know the hub parameter, we need to know the redshift. So how to know the redshift? In our observation, in our future observation, we can observe a number of PVH binaries at high redshift. And for each PVH binary, we have their redshifted mass and we have their velocity distance. Therefore, for we have a distribution on their redshift mass like here. And for their luminosity distance, we know that its relation with the half parameter is as this equation. Once we know the redshift, we will know the half parameter, but we don't know the redshift. Therefore, we can assume a half parameter here. We assume a value of half parameter. And for this equation, for each observed luminosity distance with the assumed half parameter, we can solve this because they are cosmic redshift. Just based on a uh, uh, based on a uh, uh, cosmology background like the number CDM model, now we can solve uh, their redshift. This redshift is solved from assumed half parameter, and uh, also we know their redshift mass. Once we solve this redshift, we can obtain their intrinsic mass from this redshift mass. Then we can find that. For different assumed half parameter, we obtain a different redshift. And different redshift give us the different intrinsic mass. Therefore, we can construct a PBH mass function as this. And you can find that this mass function is, depends on the assumed value of half parameter. If in the future we, we know the, the physical PBH mass function and we combine it with our obtained result, and such a comparison will let us know what's the value of the Hubble parameter. Now to achieve that, what we first need to do is to construct a relation between this uh, redshift mass distribution and the PBH mass function. We need to construct such a relation. So how to construct it? We first considering a cumulative distribution of redshift mass of PBH binaries. And the such a cumulative distribution, we need to consider the uh, PBH mass function, intrinsic mass function, and uh, consider for PBH binaries. And uh, need, we also need to uh, consider the uh, detection limit of the gravitational wave detectors. This introduces a detectable window function to show uh, what's the percentage of PBH binary with this interest mass can be detected? And we also need to consider the redshift distribution of the PBH binaries. And we integrate the PBH intrinsic mass from zero to the uh, this uh, this redshift mass divided by their redshift. And then we also integrate their cosmic redshift from zero to infinity. This gives us our uh, uh, cumulative distribution on the redshift mass of PBH binaries. And in order to know the probability distribution of uh, redshift mass, we need to partial this cumulative distribution on the redshift mass of PBH bands on each component. Then we obtain this relation. And uh, in order to know the relation between this distribution of redshift mass and the PBH binary PBH mass function, we need to know what's this window function and what's the redshift distribution of PBH binaries. For the window function, the definition is the observed PBH binary in the uh, 
total number of pivot binary with this two intrinsic mass at the pressure plate. And this can be calculated by integral the detectable orbital parameter major axis and eccentricity of the PVH binaries over uh, of this um, uh, probability distribution on the major axis and eccentricity for the PVH binaries. And uh, for such a, a detectable orbital parameter range, we need to, the, the, the range can be find from the signal to noise ratio of this PVH binary larger than a threshold value of eight. Then we can obtain such a, a window function. And uh, for the redshift distribution of PBH binaries, we use the uh, moderator of Pomodoro black hole binaries versus a redshift as approximation for this redshift distribution. Then we can construct a relation between the uh, um, or pro, uh, we can we can use uh, depends on PVH mass function. We can calculate the uh, probability distribution on redshift mass like this. Here we use the log normal mass function and the power law mass function as uh, two examples to calculate their different uh, probability distribution on their redshift mass. Uh, now. Observationally, we know that we can obtain the redshifted mass distribution. And we also have such a relation. So the next step is to construct, reconstruct the PBH mass function from this observable. How to achieve that? Here we use a very popular a numerically algorithm, the gradient descent method. This method is very popular in the machine learning. Here, observationally, we have this uh, distribution, and we want to know the physical PVH mass function. But currently, we don't know. Therefore, we just uh, randomly guess the PVH mass function here, and it will produ produce a theoretical uh, distribution of redshift mass. And uh, this theoretical distribution and observational distribution should, uh, should do not equal with each other. Therefore, there must be a difference between them. We calculate the difference between the theoretical distribution and the observational distribution, which give us an error function. If in a few if we get the correct the PBH mass function, uh, this error function should be zero. However, when we get the wrong PVH mass function, this error function is a positive value. Therefore, in order to, and also this error function is a function of a guess PVH mass function. Therefore, in, in order to obtain the correct PVH mass function, we will need to keep decreasing this error function by partial this error function, partial the guess uh, PVH mass function, and use this uh, gradient to upgrade the PBH mass function from the previous one to a new PBH mass function. And such an upgradation, such an update will keep decreasing the error function to the zero. And when this error function achieves its minimum value, we obtain a approximation of PBH mass function. We can find that uh, the blue curve is our assumed normal PBH mass function with uh, PBH mass uh, 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 characteristic uh, PBH mass 30 solar mass. And uh, the right dot is from the uh, is the resolved uh, PBH mass function based on the gradient descent method. And you can find the difference between them is within 1% difference. Therefore, there is a gradient descent method that is reliable. However, how about the redshift distribution of PBH binaries? Previously, we used the merge of PBH binary as an approximation. However, observationally, we don't know the redshift of PBH binary, so we don't have such a redshift distribution. But we can do something such as Observationally, we have the luminosity distance. So we don't know their redshift. And, uh, but we can, based on the background cosmology named the CDM model, and we assume a hyperparameter value, assume one value, 
and the combine this assumed value with the observed luminosity distance, we can solve this redshift here. Therefore, for different assumed hyperparameter value, we can solve a different redshift, and the solved redshift will give us a redshift distribution of PVH binaries. Here, because this redshift distribution of PVH binaries depends on assumed value of hyperparameter, therefore, Based on this, uh, this relation, and we use the gradient descent method to solve the PVH mass function. This solved PVH mass function should also depend on the assumed Hubble parameter value. Just as this figure shows, in this figure, we will assume the PVH mass function is a normal mass function, and we assume the background cost ball is the MCDM model, and the Hubble parameter is the uh, Planck value. And we can find that once we assume the different uh, half parameter, the resolved, reconstructed PBH mass function are different. And in the future, if we know the, the real PBH mass function, we compare the PBH mass function with our with, uh, reconstructed result, we can know which half parameter is the uh, true value. Yes but we don't know the PVH mass function currently. But, however, we can know some other observable which is related with PVH mass function, such as the merge rate of PVH bands. Based on our reconstructed PVH mass function, due to on the assumed different half frame value, we can use such a PVH mass function to calculate the merge rate distribution of PVH binaries. And this, and uh, such a merger distribution can compare with our future observation. And uh, we can find that use the future, the merger distribution of PVH binaries to compare them and which can help us to determine what is the correct value of Hubble parameter. Like this. In this case, we can use the merge rate of probably black hole binaries to as a probe to probe the Hubble parameter value. And in this case, the from the black hole binaries can work as a probe to probe the half parameter at the high redshift, especially in the dark age. And the such a measurement on the half parameter can help us to understand where does the half tension comes from, and can also help us to understand the evolution of our universe from the early stage to the later stage. That's all. Thank you.